Welcome to the Zenel Podcast, Intelligent Automation Series, where we bring to you conversations with the leaders and trailblazers of automation from around the world. Intelligent automation is a powerful confluence of process intelligence, intelligent document processing, RPA, low-code, no-code application development, and intelligent virtual agents. Built on a stack of advanced intelligence capabilities, powered by generative AI, and supported by next-gen infrastructure. It empowers enterprises to drive integrated human experience outcomes, powered by agile, configurable workflows. Hello and welcome to an all-new episode of the Snow Podcast Intelligent Automation Series. This is where we dive deep into the latest trends and innovations, getting unique perspectives from industry leaders across the world of intelligent automation and digital transformation. I'm your host, Pranku Sharma, a principal for the automation and AI practice at Zenov. Digital technologies such as generative AI, automation, and others have been transforming the telecom sector. And these technologies are streamlining not just customer-facing operations, but also network management. Uh, generative AI, for instance, has, was instrumental in, um, in really thinking through predictive maintenance, forecasting, network issues, and optimizing network configurations, which not only reduces downtime, but also enhances uh, network configurations and optimizing the overall uh, quality of of service. Furthermore, automation driven by AI is revolutionizing customer support via chatbots, virtual assistants, and automated troubleshooting. And as the telecom industry continues to embrace these modern digital technologies, it is poised to become more efficient, reliable, and responsive in their service and ensuring that uh, we enter into this new era of global connectivity. Today, we have two guests to discuss the transformation telecom providers uh, can make the most of through these uh, digital technologies, specifically around automation and generative AI. We have Hidaya Ravindranath, Chief Digital and Information Officer of Orange Business. And we have Samit Gupte, CEO of Evolute IQ, a disruptive intelligent automation platform. Welcome Hidaya and Samit to today's episode. Thanks, Prankur. Thanks for having, having me. Great. Let's get started. So Hidaya, uh, why don't we start with you? Uh, you recently joined Orange as the Chief Digital and Information Officer. Can you help us understand what is your vision and what is the go forward digital transformation roadmap that you have uh, thought through for Orange? Sure. So I uh, recently joined Orange Business uh, and I'm uh, responsible for the tech agenda for, for the company. I also have the mandate of uh, building the digital first agenda as well. What that means basically is about taking our business online. So it's been about almost six months since I've uh, joined the company and I'm inspired by several assets that we've got. Um, We've got an incredibly rich portfolio of products and services, and we've got some fantastic people. That's the beating heart of this company. But also Orange Business, as with most companies in in today's world, uh, has its challenges as well. and, And that's fundamentally driven by external market forces where our customer expectations are changing dramatically. Our product mix is changing to meet those customer expectations because the technology innovation is driving some, a big part of that change. And also we've got cost challenges as well. Uh, like with most companies, more, more, most mature industries, you know, we're all facing into this, into these uh, challenges. And that creates a huge amount of uh, reliance on IT and tech. Uh, so we're sort of you know, it's like it's it's you know it becomes either IT and tech becomes is the biggest problem or it becomes the biggest enabler. So I feel like I'm at the epicenter of 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 that uh, sort of revolution that's happening uh, in the industry and of course within within Orange Business as well. So with that in mind, I've actually structured our digital transformation agenda across six key strategic imperatives, which are, which I will share with you. Uh, the first is about digital first, and I talked about this briefly in my introduction. So what digital first means is about, it has a singular purpose. It's about taking our business online. And we're a a traditional telco. We've been in the business for, you know, 30, 40 years. Uh, And fundamentally, uh, this was built, I mean, built on foundations pre the digital era. So a big part of 
uh, my strategy and what my team are going to be driving at Orange Business is basically building all of our digital assets. That basically means we can take our business online. And that this, these are things like our e-commerce capabilities for B2B journeys, plus also uh, e-care, you know, when customers, you know, want to obviously, um, you know, manage their services online and raise, you know, tickets and so on, you know, so that's, that's the first imperative. Um, but building, building a shiny front end and building a set of portals won't cut it. Uh, at its core, we're also, uh, we're also building a state of, state of the art tech stack that, that basically houses all our products and services. So we're literally building a tech stack from the ground up, completely greenfield. And that's to do with the fact that almost every one of our products are now being re-engineered as next generation products. And, you know, given the fact that we've, you know, we're a mature industry, we have a huge legacy and our existing IT systems won't be able to cope with the level of innovation and change that's needed in the product arena. The third uh, uh, strategic imperative is exploiting data and AI at scale. And, and AI now is a huge buzzword in the industry. And of course, it has tremendous amount of application and we want to be able to exploit that at scale. And, and what that means is we want to be able to get our data, bring all of our data. And we have, a, I mean, as a telco, uh, and you mentioned some of this, uh, Prankur, in your introduction, we have a lot of information and a lot of data, especially when we monitor and manage large scale infrastructure. Uh, but how that manifests itself, how we exploit that to actually create value for customers is still yet untapped. And we want to make sure we use technology, we use the innovation that's available both in the public cloud and, and several other partners to be able to exploit this at scale. Um, so that's the, that's the third. Um, the fourth is what I call being sustainable by design. Uh, I mean, one of the key um, sort of priorities now as a tech leader is to ensure that we are building our solutions that are actually sustainable by design. And what that means is uh, we want to be we want to be extremely careful about the amount of compute, the amount of resources we use, our impact with energy use in our data centers, and so on. Also, circularity. I mean, we are a big network player. I mean, we have a whole bunch of network equipment that's deployed. We want to make sure that we are able to recycle and 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 provide a circular economy around our infrastructure as well. So this is again a very very important priority for us as we build our future future solutions. Um, the fifth strategic imperative is um, strengthening our cybersecurity. Again, this is a topical issue. It's a it's a boardroom risk, uh, but also it's it's one of those things that you know it's 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 a topic that people don't really enjoy uh, talking about because it's it's le less to do about offense and innovation. It's more to do about defense. But having said that. We want to make sure that we are on the front foot when it comes to managing our cyber risk. Um, so this is to do, uh, I mean, to do with how we how we manage our legacy infrastructure, but also as we build our new capabilities, our new IT, our new tech, our new uh, infrastructure, we we build that secure by design as well. Yeah. So we're always ahead of the curve rather than being reactive to uh, to situations. Um, and finally, and which I think is probably more important than all of it, uh, is, is, is what I call supercharging our people, operating model and culture. Uh, and this, this is to do with the fact that, you know, again, we are, we're, we're transforming as a company uh, where we, we are we're building, you know, a new set of products and services, bringing it into the digital age, uh, which, which at, the, at its core will, will require a huge people upskilling effort, as well as an operating model change uh, within the company as well. So there's a lot of focus that we're putting here. We come from an engineering culture. We want to move that now to a more digital first customer oriented culture. Uh, so that in itself is a huge pivot. You know, as a tech leader, I keep saying this is it should be less about the technology. It should be more about the human. Uh, and that's the kind of change we're trying to do at, its, at the sort of core of the company. Thanks, Adair. That was certainly very comprehensive and I think gave a great insight into what your thought process is and priorities are uh, for the next uh, few quarters and, and uh, potentially years. Uh, Samit, you have the experience of working with multiple global enterprises, right? And uh, we are seeing clearly uh, uh, that digital transformation uh, has become a CEO priority today, right? And as I mentioned, it can be your biggest enabler or it could be the biggest bottleneck to your business. Uh, so how are you seeing uh, 
the digital transformation roadmap evolved and how is AI and automation becoming core to the whole digital transformation agenda of, of CXOs of global enterprises? So Prankur, uh, you know, just listening to Ruda, it kind of revalidates why Evolute IQ and why, why we are where we are, right? Which is, I think, see, digital transformation or AI or, uh, you know, Gen AI, I think this is now a way of life, right? This is how you conduct business. I don't think it's an option for anybody, whether you're a, a telco provider or you're an airline or whatever it is. I think uh, it is here. It is here to stay. It is the way you will conduct business. It is the way of life. And I think, uh, you know, all the C CXOs like Riday, they've all sort of embraced it. I mean, and if those who have not, I think they're going to fall back. I mean, there, and there's no recovery because... You know, this is something which is happening real time. This is transformation which is happening uh, to embrace something which is, uh, you know, going to be how we build the next generation and the next generation, all of it. I mean, we just heard a CX level person talking about redoing and creating the fundamentals of building something which is, you know, forward looking. And it's not just about tech. It is about the people who absorb that, understand that culturally, this is how they need to design systems. This is how they need to provide an experience for the end customer. This is how they can differentiate themselves with respect to, you know, their competitors. I think that is what is actually the definition of digital transformation, right? When, when the first thing you think is, uh, you know, native, I mean, what Riday mentioned, digital first, you know, it's everybody has to start thinking native, right? It has to be core. And I think that's where things like automation, I mean, you know, automation should be a default, right? What we are seeing now is people who are embracing this as a way of life, then they are looking at how they can improve the experience of their own employees, how they can improve the experience of their customers, and what are the technologies that enable it. And obviously, you know, artificial intelligence, automation, Gen AI, I think all of this is very much on the forefront because, again, this is what is driving what the world will look like in the future, right? And you know, it's been very interesting for us. I mean, when we started Evolute IQ, I was standing there and telling people end-to-end -end automation, full stack, you got to do the whole thing. Look at the process as end-to-end -end because that's how your business sees it. That's how your customers see it. But, you know, we were so caught up in solving one part of the problem and we did that brilliantly instead of solving the entire problem. And then we took all these multiple solutions and put them together and then they solve the overall problem. But what you just introduced was, yeah, sure, some kind of digital transformation. But what you introduced was also complexity, inefficiency, and you know, stitching up different technologies and solutions together. And I think that's what that's what you know excites us. And then obviously the Gen AI piece kind of comes on top of it, which is you know all about okay, so how do you make this better? You know, how do you identify the patterns? How do you do that? And then that piece also what we are seeing introduces the thing of risk. So Gen AI is very much going to be the fabric of this next uh, generation that we see in terms of digital transformation. But it is what we see as people are doing that within, the, within the walls. I mean, they do want to leverage what's out there, but they also want to innovate and create the patterns and the LLMs within their boundaries, within the guardrails that, you know, CIOs like Riday will say they will do it or they need to do it and kind of have a balanced view. So that's how I'm seeing this whole thing come up. I mean, AI is the next one. Again, it is something I have been toying with since 97. So, you know, for some of us, it's not something new. But hey, you know, finally, the world has caught up. So we are very happy about it. And uh, yeah, it's the way forward. Uh, for us, it's it's an integral part of what Evolute IQ as a technology is built on. So, you know, we've been offering it for a very long time and since inception. Uh, but yes, I do see people asking legitimate questions wanting to adopt it in the right way. So I think that's uh, that's my observation or my experience over the past few years. Thanks, thanks, Samit. And, and I think you you uh, sort of brought in a lot of dimensions to the whole uh, digital and automation journey of enterprises. And I think over the course of our conversation, we want to probably dissect each of them uh, as, as we sort of get in your perspectives as well. I'll, I'll just pick one aspect first in terms of looking at, okay, business is is being defined by how technology is is go to each of those different business operations uh, business functions 
so Hrida, if you can help us understand right from a telco standpoint uh, what are the key outcomes that uh, telcos are, are chasing whether it is on the network operation side on the customer experience side or overall in terms of how you are thinking about scaling the business uh, from a digital transformation perspective, what are those business outcomes uh, that you would be uh, focusing on? Sure. So first, let me start off by saying it's like an assertion. The telecom sector, I think, is going through probably one of the most profound changes in its history as a sector. I mean, I know I, I know almost every industry is going through that. I mean, we are no, we're no less. For us, in our history, from a, from a technology change perspective and a industry perspective, from a customer expectation perspective, everything is changing around us. I mean, whether it's the technology revolution that's driving it with 5G, with satellites, with cloud, with hyper automation. And Samit talked a little bit about that. He talked about AI, you know, AI has got a profound impact. But what that's leading to is our business model is fundamentally changing. What we're seeing is our legacy business, which was hugely profitable. I mean, it's a very margin rich business in the telco world. It's in sharp structural decline whilst we're growing our new products and services. Now, our new products and services have a complete different margin mix to our legacy businesses, yeah, because we're moving from what is primarily a very infrastructure, capex-intensive business to also, we're still a capex-intensive business, but with, with a whole lot of OTT services surrounding that, how we innovate with partners become incredibly important. So we're moving from a very proprietary, own-build, you know, very rich heritage of legacy margin rich environment to this new era of products and services that has a very different margin profile and the way we deploy that into customer environments also changing that's creating tremendous amount of change both in the way we need to innovate in the market but also on our pnl you know we need to be far more efficient so that's why we need to we need to we need to really look at you know automation capabilities you know and, and again hyper automation is a word that i think the market has started to use and it has multiple dimensions. How we use that in the right mix is super important. Again, you know, and, and Samit talked about silos. You know, we should not make sure that we focus on one thing. We need to focus on the right combination. So that's one. And then if I, if I move, if I want to sort of just double click probably on building on what Samit said on AI. AI has been around, by the way, for decades. In fact, in, in academia and research, it's been around since the 70s. If you see some of the models, it's, you know, all of that was written by scientists in university in the 70s and in the 80s. In fact, I did a, I did a degree, I did a master's in AI in 2005 uh, before AI was as cool as it is today. And I was citing, you know, references that was 25, 30 years old, you know? So some of those concepts are that old. But what has changed, and especially in the last decade, obviously the internet has brought a lot of change, of which data has exploded, computational power has exploded, which basically means the way you apply AI can drastically improve both operational efficiency as well as it can create value for customers. But again, you know, the last decade again is not really revolutionary. It's more evolutionary. Yeah. This whole explosion of data and compute, uh, because I think industry sometimes referred to as narrow AI, but what it's now hit, hit all of us. In the last uh, six to 12 months, I should say, with obviously with chat GPT and open AI, with, with, which is this concept of generative AI. And some people are also now evolving that concept to be called artificial general intelligence. And where that's different from the narrow AI, which I talked about earlier, is now, I mean, this is AI starting to interpret language, interpret data with context. And context is super important. And when you add context to this, you know, all of that other in, uh, statistical mo models and so on, the AI is starting to actually interpret and start to behave like a human brain. Yeah. And that is now starting to become, you know, it's starting I mean, the applications of that is, is, is starting to grow. So I'm super excited by the applications that some of these technologies can bring. Great. Great. Uh, and Samit, from your perspective, I think they gave a really in-depth view on how telco, the telco world is changing, but you work with enterprises across healthcare, financial services, manufacturing, retail. Uh, what have, has, have there been like similar sort of structural shifts in terms of what outcomes companies are chasing from technology, uh, any specific sort of call-outs that you would have from your experience? 
you know i think it is across the board right i think a lot of people are reinventing themselves the ai wave has hit them hard and i think the board of directors are i'm sure breathing down the neck of all the cxos asking and demanding for where is your strategy in so a lot of people a lot of industries are reinventing themselves and i think a few stand out i mean insurance stands out telecom stands out healthcare stands out banking always has been the biggest adopter of uh, technology and they have big budgets and you know even they are sort of uh, you know where we think that they were very advanced and one of the early adopters even they are playing catch up to a lot of things that are happening and the latest report i heard was a trillion and the, for the first time in my professional career i put a trillion dollars of uh, opportunity on a slide and presented it to my board and i was like my god you know this 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 is here right so i think uh, the point i'm making uh, prankur is that uh, because there is so much of uh, willingness to change uh, a few asks have also changed i mean earlier people would just talk about efficiency uh, they would talk about value roi all of that i think what i've now started seeing is hey what's my experience going to be like what's the experience going to be like for the customer right you know how can because i think you know faster cheaper better roi the hard metrics is a given every business pretty much has all of those right if not you know they are driving towards it so now people are trying to say okay so if i use a gen ai or if i use the eiq 6.0 what else happens you know what else is my delta what is that x factor that i would get and how do i measure it you know if you are saying oh it just gives me a great experience in employees or customer or whatever it has no meaning you know how do you quantify that you know what is a scientific way of measuring that yes you know i instead of delivering this entire thing in 20 weeks evolute iq will allow me to do this in 11 weeks great good i get that you know it would be uh, 60% savings or you know all these are very hard factors so this is a given what else can you do for me or what else can now this technology do which it was not doing and i think that ask i have started seeing with a lot of people who are embracing the transformation because you know what they have internalized at a strategic level is i understand my business kpis i've been doing this for donkeys years i know this right i understand what it takes to compete with my competitors in the circumstance and paradigm of today but what can i create i this is my opportunity to invest a lot and transform what can i create for tomorrow that my competitor is not thinking and my customer has not yet realized is something that they need right and i think that those kind of questions we are getting asked so as i said customer experience uh, employee experience as a, and and quantifying that what does that really mean right uh, roi but roi not restricted to oh i have put in a million dollars you know this is my business case what do i get back but roi with another dimension of okay with all of this how is it sustainable over the next 7 years and what happens and what is the future proofing of you know how my customers or my competitive landscape relates to this so i think those are some of the changes and challenges that we are seeing in this new transformative thing the standard kpis are always there but i and these things in, but these things interest me because as a ceo i am getting challenged to to demonstrate that to my customer and so samit then and, and just on on the aspect of challenges i think we'll just maybe Uh, change cares a bit to understand what could be the potential challenges right while i think the imperative uh, around technology is certainly clear you uh, digital transformation is a is a must do for every enterprise but in that journey and maybe is there if you can help us understand right you have been at the helm of technology adoption for the last 15 plus years uh, in your career Uh, can you help us understand what have been those challenges around people process technologies and uh, what were some of the ways in which you helped overcome those yeah sure prankur so yes i mean i've been, <laughs> i've been in the technology field for many many years now uh, spearheading transformation using technology even though i'm a uh, even though i'm a technologist at heart what i've actually learned is you know the most the most challenging part of any transformation is the people side i mean business change is incredibly hard technology change is incredibly easy uh business change is incredibly hard and actually the human side is is it becomes the most challenging part of any any type of transformation so i think few few points in terms of learning 
especially you know <laughs> as a as an engineer or as a technologist the most important thing is focus on simplicity don't over engineer anything the second thing is use use design thinking use you human centered design in the in your approach i mean i think it's one of the most powerful tools that's out there for any product or technology company so if you're not already using it i mean i would really urge you to use it it makes a huge difference and then again the final point i would say is focus on adoption so this pretty much sums up my you know if i had to say maybe sum up my entire experience in terms of key learnings this will probably sum it up for me yes i think completely the human side of technology is where i think it falters a lot of time so probably that's that's where you focus your energies on samit uh, i think you being a automation platform company uh, what are your sort of best practices uh, on on solving for some of the challenges that you see in that whole uh, digital transformation and technology transformation journey you know i riday just spoke our core philosophy i mean we have been obsessed with adoption i think uh, you know the reason being one of the biggest things that uh, has not worked out for some of the other uh, you know first generation automation platforms which sort of landed up 4 5 years ago uh, is the fact that uh, you know they solved a part of the problem and everybody thought that was the silver bullet but the reason the adoption after that has not really taken off is because uh, one obviously you know people realizing that it doesn't solve the whole problem that's point number 1 point number 2 is the most important bit is all the business cases were breaking down because financially it was not viable right so i think what we have focused and obsessed about is adoption so simplicity of use i mean intuitive right i mean we have taken a lot of inspiration from uh, you know how the smartphone uh, world has evolved it doesn't matter which part of the platform you are using your approach and the way you build it and the way you construct it is similar so it increases the adoption i think that has been our key thing uh, i think that has also been the biggest challenge in in our industry and uh, in the technology space that we approach so i think that has been the biggest you know apart from that i think the first generation players you know have a lot of legacy in automation so the costs have been prohibitive we were born native we were born in 2019 with the entire technology stack built out and we always looked at the problem end to end so that has given us an advantage but if i was one of them i would be worried because i would have only sold an rpa for many years and now when the world wants a full end to end stack i'm either building it or buying it and so obviously that has a commercial impact right and then the third thing is you know um the whole thing about uh, legacy systems and integrating with legacy system see if i go to riday and tell him riday i have arrived and i have this great thing riday is not going to say sami thank you for coming throw everything out and just you know do what i you know what my technology does nobody would do it right so the first thing every cio or every user is going to ask is hey i have invested for many many years i have all of these legacy systems i have home grown systems you know how does this whole thing operate in this ecosystem and how do i maximize my investments when i put all of this i think these are the three three things that we see you know the adoptability uh, you know the the cost and obviously then uh, ensuring that the investments that people have made and customers have made uh, are protected and not written off just because you know there's a new shiny thing uh, that has come yes certainly and i think that also is uh, is probably a challenge for uh, people like say there who are constantly evaluating new platforms and and seeing how does that fit into my existing technology stack right so like how do you go about that process right like uh, are there certain sort of lookouts that you always have uh, whenever you are evaluating new technologies or new technology platforms uh, that can meet your needs uh, and and Or fit into yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's been a huge explosion of capability uh, that's out there in the market. I mean, the I mean, of, of course, there's the SaaS world and there's the product vendor ecosystem that basically focus on functional depth, but there's also this huge automation explosion. I mean, I think Gartner said there were like over thousand companies now that that sort of play in this space, covering all aspects of automation. I mean, one of the biggest challenges is. you can't solve one problem in a silo and then not look at the, the broad spectrum i mean we need to look at this end to end and we need the right the the right combination of capabilities driving that end to end 
automation, driving that end-to-end transformation. I think as a tech sort of leader, as a tech buyer, you know, we need to find the right combination. And, you know, to what Samit said, also it needs to be able to be compatible and interoperable with the brownfield that we have. You know, because, you know, as I said, you know, with most companies, we, we have a huge legacy and we need to make, make sure that it, it, it's, it's able to interoperate with that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, Prantur, uh, but it would be genuinely weird as a, as a new technology player or uh, as a vendor to approach any customer and expect that, you know, even if it is the right solution at the right time, you know, there is, there is an ongoing business, there's an ongoing relationship, there's an ongoing architecture, there's an ongoing structure, skills, uh, everything, right? I mean, for somebody to even, and, and we all go through this even during our daily life, right? I mean, just because there's an answer which is absolutely correct today does not mean the decisions you have made two years ago, three years ago, five years ago are incorrect. It's just that, you know, the world has moved and now you've come to a point. So now, I mean, I sometimes find my job much easier than when I'm pitching to a CIO or a CXO because my job is, hey, you know, this is the best thing. Trust me, the world is going this way. I'm pretty sure the guy on the other side gets it. But, you know, he's carrying all of this, right, and has to make a very balanced decision of how do I bring in innovation without really completely destroying what has got me so far because, you know, it doesn't work that way. And I think... I definitely have the advantage of being born without any baggage and without any legacy. So my architecture kind of takes all of this into consideration today. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that aspect of Siddharth's job is probably that what what we don't envy. Um, And and Samit, I think uh, just going deeper into some of technology aspects around telecom and and automation, right? So uh, what are some of those like specific use cases or problem statements that you have helped telecom companies solve from using some of the intelligent automation and AI technologies. I'll tell you one which excites me the most in the telecom sector is, you know, them trying to balance this whole 5G and the legacy of the 2G, 3G and the 4G that they have. And, uh, you know, the whole uh, dissecting the networks and, you know, leveraging the automation to sort of integrate all of this because, you know, the 5G obviously brings in a lot of you know, advantages for the customer. But obviously, again, you know, people are not just going to switch or there's a lot of infrastructure that people have put in for, you know, the past uh, uh, 2G or a 3G or a 4G. And I think using the, uh, I see a lot of uh, the ones that we work with uh, trying to balance, you know, how do they do the billing? How do they use uh, the revenue uh, cycle? How do they use automation to sort of decipher uh, you know, uh, break the networks into different, how do they build their customers? How do they get that? You know, how do they reduce uh, the human intervention and all of this, because then it's prone to errors and you can't have an unhappy customer. So I think for me, that has been the the most uh, challenging use case for uh, Evolute IQ as such, where you're doing billing, where you're doing a whole order to cash when, you know, ha- the customers, different parts of the business of the end customers are on different, uh, you know, networks and are then sort of migrating and then ensuring that all those pieces are automated. The customer experience is not changing. They're kind of built accurately and then reducing the footprint of human intervention. And-, uh, and, and I think the biggest challenge that companies and leaders need to solve for is really about looking at the human side of technology, whether it is around adoption of uh, the technology or making technology simple for people to actually uh, use and and then get uh, real results from. And then from a platform perspective, I think uh, the end-to-end approach uh, is something that that is sought after. And it's, of course, not a one-size-fits-all scenario, but you need to make sure that you are integrating well with the existing and historical sort of uh, technology stacks that that we that large enterprises have built. This was a very enlightening conversation, even for me, and I'm I'm hoping that all our uh, audience also found it equally enjoyable and enlightening. So thank you so much again, uh, Samit and Hidayat, uh, for sharing your insights and making time to do this today. Thanks, Prankur. Thanks, Hidayat. Thanks, thanks, Prankur. Thanks, Samit. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. This is Pranko signing off for today. Uh, see you at our next episode. 
Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Zenov Podcast, Intelligent Automation Series. If you found this episode insightful, subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episode. If you have suggestions or you'd like to nominate yourself for any of our podcast series, drop us a note at info at zenov.com. You can check out our other podcasts on our website at www.zenov.com. <laughs>